Hello, folks, and welcome to GED Microlearning, where we help you pass your GED exam. So remember that in your GED test, you will have various different types of questions that can be multiple choice, that can be fill in the blank, drag and drop, etc. You're also going to have questions where you cannot use a calculator. And this video is a little bit different because I am actually responding to, uh, to Shadana, who left me this comment about you know creating a video where uh, I show you how to solve questions without a calculator. So let me know in the, if the comments below if this is uh, something that you want me to, to continue doing. All right, so question one, it says, Mary is planning to build a wall on her patio. On a scale drawing of the patio, 0.25 inches is equal to one foot. If she wants to build a wall, 3.7 feet, sorry for the typo, in height, what is the length in inches represented in the scale drawing? All right, so the first thing that I would suggest is that you stop the video and that you have a go at the problem, and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so when I solve a problem, what I like to do, I'm a very visual person, so I like to kind of visualize what they're asking me, right? So they're telling me that I have this drawing on the left, which is called the scale, and whatever is on this drawing is going to represent real life, which is on the right. So on the drawing, 0 0.25 inches is equal to one foot. So normally, like if you had a calculator or whatever, you would probably set up what we call a proportion. But here, you don't have a calculator. So how can you solve this problem? Well, one thing you could do is you could create a table, right? So they're telling us that 0 0.25 inches is equal to one foot, okay? So if I asked you how many inches is two feet, all you have to do is double that amount, right? So you would add 0 0.25 plus 0 0.25, right? So it's like going from one quarter to two quarters, right? To, or 50, 25 cents to 50 cents, okay? So, so now we know that 0 0.25 inches is equal to two feet. Um, so what would three feet be? Well, once again, all you have to do is add 0 0.25 to that amount. That would give you 0 0.75. And how much is 4 feet? Once again, just add 0 0.25. Okay, so now you have an idea of uh, how many um, you know, inches are equal in real life uh, to you know, what, how many feet that equals in real life. All right, so let's go back to the question and it's asking you, that's telling you that the wall is going to be 3.5 feet in height. So if you look back at your table, you can see that that value is going to be there between 3 and 4 um, on the right side. So now we have to find out what does that mean in inches. All right, so what you're going to do is you're going to take those two numbers on the uh, right on the left side that are inside a little box and you're going to take an average. All right, so you're going to add those two up. And then basically you're going to divide it by two. Okay, and here you're basically um, going to have to do kind of long division. And when you do that, so if you kind of looked at it, you know, it's going to be more or less around eight or 0 0.8, right? So that would give you the answer. That's the number in the middle. And that is a correct answer, answer B. Question two. So question two is a question that looks at, they're, they're testing you two things. So here they're looking at uh, if you're able to understand information from a number line, and they're also testing to see if you know what an absolute value is. So if you look at uh, the options for the C and D, you see that there's these vertical lines surrounding the numbers. This is known as an absolute value. So the really uh, kind of uh, posh description of what an absolute value is, like mathematically, is this. It's the distance from zero that a number is on the number line. And the absolute value is never negative. Okay, so what essentially this means is that whenever you see a number that is surrounded by these vertical bars, whatever number is inside those vertical uh, lines is going to turn positive. Okay, so if you have three surrounded by absolute value bars, that's a three. And if you have a negative three surrounded by these absolute value bars, that's also three. Okay, so whatever is inside those bars turns to positive. All right, so now let's talk a little bit about the number line. So they're asking you, um, 
which expression below represents the distance from x to y on the number line. All right, and let's really simplify this. They're asking you distance from x to y. So imagine x is your house, y is your work. And you were on the subway or you were on the bus and you wanted to know the distance or how many stops there were between your house and your work. So here I am, one stop, two, three, and four. All right, so the distance is equal to four. And that's it. That is the answer to the question. So now what you have to do is you have to go through each of the options and see which of the options that they give you gives you four. So option A was minus three plus one. What would that be? Minus two, right? So is that equal to four? No, it's not. So that answer is incorrect. Option B, minus three minus one. That is minus four. So once again, this option is incorrect. Option C, okay, notice you have the absolute value bars. So remember that whatever is inside um, the answer that you obtain is gonna be positive. So you have minus three plus one. So what would the answer to be that, that be? It would be minus two, right? But because you have an absolute value, it's actually not minus two, it's plus two. So this is actually also incorrect because we said that the answer is four. So finally, option D, minus three, minus one, that would give you minus four. We have absolute value bars, so it's not minus four, it's actually plus four, which is the correct answer. Okay, and that's all there is to this question. Question three. So question three looks at um, adding uh, two numbers with a square root. So it asks you to say, uh, to add two square root of five plus square root of five. So the first thing that you're gonna um, remember is that on the right side where you just have the square root of five, there's actually a one in front of that square root, okay? And all you have to do is you have to add those like terms. So two plus one, which would give you three. And as far as the square roots go, you would not add them because they are common terms, okay? So you would end up with three square root of five. Option B. All right, question four. So here I'm gonna stop and do a little plug for the channel. So if you're finding this helpful, please subscribe or give us a like. Also let me know if you like this format where I just you know, tackle questions that you have um, instead of you know, doing my own thing. All right, so this next question is gonna look at, it's gonna test three skills. The first one is your ability to understand fractions. The second one, your ability to understand decimal points and how decimals and, and fractions kind of translate and also um, if you're able to place these numbers on a number line. Okay, so uh, once again, the way that I like to visualize things uh, to solve problems is to visualize first, right? So they're telling you where should five eighths be placed on a number line. So let's pretend you have a number line. Where would zero be? It would be on the left, right? And then number one would be on the far right. And somewhere between these two points, you would have 0.5 or one half. Okay, so notice in the question, they're not giving you decimals, right? They're giving you fractions. So if you, uh, so let's try to, to, first of all, place that fraction on, an, on the number line. So if, if you had this fraction, remember that the top number is the numerator, the bottom number is called the denominator. And if I asked you right, right now, I said, how do I, you know, put this fraction into the number line? And I said, um, how do I turn this fraction into a whole number, right? So what is uh, one? How do I turn this uh, fraction into the number one? We would say that eight over eight is equal to one. Okay, so that's how you, uh, that you would make one. What if I asked you to do the same thing for zero? We would say that zero over eight is equal to zero, right? Um, so the reason we're doing this is because now we can go back to our number line and we know that the value for one um, is 8 over 8. The value for 0 is going to be 0 over 8. And the value for 0 0.5 is going to be 4 over 8. Okay? 
And the reason we're doing this is because the question is asking you where should 5 over 8 be placed on the number line. So now you know that it's going to be somewhere in that part of the number line. And this is helpful because now you can look back at your question and you can eliminate option 1 and you can eliminate option 2. Okay, so yet now you only have two options to deal with. Okay, so um, if you look at the answer options, you can see that they're in decimals, okay? And this is going to be a little bit of a pain uh, because it means that we're going to have to trans, um, transform or translate that fraction 5 over 8 into a decimal. All right, so what you do, uh, once again, remember the numerator and the denominator you're going to do long division here. So you're going to put the denominator, the 8, outside the, the little house, and then the numerator, or the 5, inside. Okay, so how many times does 8 go into 5? 0, right? Okay, so now what we're going to do is that we have to point a, put a point there, point 0, and now we ask how many times does 5 go into, excuse me, 8 goes into 50? Um, well, it's about 6, right? Because uh, 8 times 6, or 0 0.6 in this case, uh, would give you 48, or 4.8. 4, 4 okay, so if we subtract, uh, I forgot to put the point there, sorry about that. Um, so if we subtract these two numbers from each other, you would get uh, 2. And now remember that we, um, we're going to bring down the zero, a zero, there's an imaginary zero there, we're going to bring it down and we're going to repeat the same thing. So how many times does 8 go into 20? Well, approximately 2, right? Because 2 times 8 is 16. And once again, we're going to subtract 20 minus 16, that would give you 4. And remember, we're going to bring that imaginary uh, zero down, so now you have 40. How many times does 8 go into 40? Well, it goes in exactly 5, right? So 5 times 8 is 40. 40 minus 40 is 0. Okay, so now you have your answer there in the top. 5 eighths is going to be 0 0.625. And if we look at the answer options, that is option D. Okay, so question five, which is our last question. So here it's asking you which of the following is equal to x squared minus nine. And it gives you uh, several options. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to do this in two ways. The first one is what we call factoring. So factoring means is what numbers multiplied together give you a specific number. In this case, we're interested in knowing what factors multiply to what numbers excuse me multiplied together are going to give you minus 9 so minus 1 times 9 would give you minus 9 okay so that's telling you that minus 1 and 9 are factors uh, 1 multiplied by minus 9 is equal to minus 9 okay so in this case uh, 1 and minus 9 are also factors and then 3 multiplied by minus 3 also gives you minus 9. Okay, so all of these six numbers are factors of minus 9. All right, so if we look back at the answer options, you can see that um, of all of these answer options, this is the one that includes those two numbers, right? Um, two of these numbers that are factors, so minus 3 um, and plus 3. All right, so that is one method of doing this. Another method is what we call the plug-in method. So here what you're going to do is that you're going to assign a random value to x, and you're going to plug that number into your equation. Okay, so x can be, I don't know, 2, 5, 10, 100, whatever you want. So let's pretend that x is equal to 5. So we're going to plug that 5 into your equation. So instead of having x squared minus 9, you're going to have 5 squared minus 9. So 5 squared is 25, minus 9 would give you 16. Okay, so what this is telling you is that if you plug that number 5 into all of those answer options before, you should get 16. Okay, so let's try that out. So we said x is equal to 5, let's plug it in. So 5 minus 3 squared, that would be 2 squared, which is equal to 4. So that is incorrect. We said that the answer should be 16. What about this? 5, um, let's put it in there. So 5 minus 3, or 5 plus 3. <coughs> Excuse me. 
So you would get 5 minus 3 is 2, and 5 plus 3 is 8. And remember that uh, 2, um, <coughs> uh, two uh, this, this is actually 2 multiplied by 8, okay? So that would be 16. Okay, so this is the correct answer, answer B. Let's do the other options just um, to show you everything. Okay, so let's continue. Um, so in this case, we would also plug in 5 into the equation. So we end up with 5 plus 3 and 5 plus 3. That gives us 8. And remember that those two numbers are multiplying each other. There's a multiplication sign between them. So that would be 8 times 8, which is 64. That is incorrect. And final option, let's put 5 wherever there's a, an x. So we have 5 multiplied by 5 minus 3. That would give you 10. All right, so that is also incorrect. So you can see that the only correct option is option B, um, and I have shown you two ways to do it. All right, folks, well, that is it. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, I hope you found some value of this. Once again, uh, if you're interested in getting more videos like this, please subscribe, sign up for notifications, and give us a like. Have a great day.